come at the viewpoint of Les Falaises de Saint Romain, which is overlooking the entire wine area around Bone. Well, not the entire wine area, but a, a great deal of it. And I just am sitting here looking at the sun and the light of the sun is just so soft this time of the year. It's end of September. And I just love that about moving into fall. Like the light gets so much softer, like everything just softens and you can feel that nature is slowing down and moving into this winter time of rest and resource. I really, I love that. I love that vibe. So I am on my way to the vineyards because the harvest has started. It's really a, a, a very uh, special time of the year around here and there's just this really nice vibe. So I'm going to drive down now to the vineyards and find a nice spot to go for a hike and see if maybe I can film a little bit and take you with me. And I just have the most amazing view here on the wine villages of the Haute Côte de Beaune and behind the hills is Beaune and that's where the Côte de Beaune are and that's where we're driving and I was looking at the roads to see if I could make sense of them but um, we're going that way and driving through those hills to Beaune This is a spot where I go to often and where <laughs> it's usually very quiet and it is just packed with cars right now.
During my walk, I talked to a number of winemakers and they all said that this is just the most extraordinary year, difficult year. We've had frost in early spring and then we've had so much rain over the summer. It's really a difficult year. They told me that now, this year, they're getting one bucket of grapes for an entire row of vines, which is really not the amount of grapes they usually get from an entire row. So it's just been very, very challenging for them. They did tell me that 2020 was a very good year and 2019 apparently was even better. Let's just hope for them that we'll have an amazing year next year in all meanings of the word. Meanwhile, it's starting to feel like fall a little more every day. We're still having nice, warm and sunny days, but you can tell from the mornings that fall is really here and I love this season. Our friend Pascala came from the Netherlands to help Olaf build the tiny house and we also went on a day trip to Lyon, which is a city about two hours away from where we live, to do some shopping and get some inspiration for the decoration of the tiny house and our future holiday home and guest rooms. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in. Golden. I'll follow only golden, 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 golden things. Mountain laurel high fives for miles in spring. Rainbow trout and hummingbird. soccer training which is in a different village every year uh, and this year uh, he's been put in a team that is about 20 minutes drive so it's quite far which can be a bit annoying but I decided to go for a walk um, so I wouldn't just be sitting there waiting for him to be finished 
and then I saw all of these blackberries here and I made some blackberry confiture jam the other day and uh, I wanted to make some more uh, there's plenty around our house around our village but there are so many here that I decided to pick some I found a box in, in my car and a scarf so I'm just putting them in there like that and it is such a treat I love this I love how nature just does its thing no matter what is going on in the world like everything has gone crazy and nature just keeps doing what it's always doing I love that about it Okay, everybody's helping out here. The boys are mowing the lawn. It is Wednesday, which means they have only half a day of school. Olaf and I just did some work on the tiny house and now he has asked me to leave him alone because he just concentrates so much better when I am not around. And um, so he needed my help for something and then I'm just leaving him to it. And I'm going to um, take all of my camping stuff out now because we have a lot of greenery i don't know what that's called when you cut your trees and stuff branches that need to go uh, to the special place that we have in the village for it so we're going to load all of that up in the van and then i'm actually going to hopefully start cleaning it because i'm going on a camping trip and i might meet up with a friend from the uk um, we're trying to get that organized so cross your fingers that that will work I'm going to try and see if I can just pull this out and then everything comes out because these are blackberries, cuts from blackberries, wild blackberries. We call them ronce in French, or at least that's what we're calling them around here. I think that's the same thing in all of France and they give wonderful blackberries. We've been eating them. I've been making confiture. I've been making clafoutis. Uh, but they have so many thorns. So when you're handling them, I'm not wearing the right gloves. Um, you get stings stung everywhere um, so I'm just going to see if that works and I also picked really a really a huge amount of them the other day and I made um, a clafouti I don't know if you know what that is and I'm going to show you how to make it gonna do is drive and it will just fall out. I love it. We did it. High five. So I'm just going to take this out and then go home and like I promised, show you how to make clafouti. So with part of the blackberries that I picked yesterday, I'm going to make a traditional French 
sweet dish. It could be like sort of like a pie or a cake. It's called clafouti. I think it's originally made with cherries, but you can put any, you can put blueberries, blackberries, raspberries. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take any dish. It can be round, it can be uh, square like this and cover it with butter. That is full fat butter. The French kitchen doesn't do light or low fat or anything like that. So you're going to cover that with butter. Next, you're going to take a little bit of sugar and you're going to put that all over the bottom. Then you put your fruit, so whether that be raspberries, blackberries, or blueberries, you're just going to put them on the bottom like this. This is just my, my favorite recipe because it looks fantastic when it's finished and it's really no work at all. Next, you're going to make I don't know if you call that batter. I think this is the right word for it because it's more like a pancake kind of texture, really. This has a little bit of flour, um, a little bit of sugar, and I'm going to add some milk. And you can use any kind of like oat milk if you can't have dairy milk. I've tried this with so many different styles. And then I'm going to add two eggs. going in and then we'll just mix this shortly till it's all smooth. What you could add is put some lemon zest in it but I didn't have any organic lemons so I left it out. You can basically, it will be wonderful no matter what you do with it. Now all you do is you simply pour this over The clafouti is finished. This is what it looks like when it comes straight out of the oven. If you've got icing sugar, uh, leave this to cool and then put a little icing sugar on it. Makes it look even more fabulous. Hello, good morning. I'm in my van in front of a traffic light that takes forever. Five more minutes, it says. And the sun is shining, but I'm not on my way to Provence as I intended. I wanted to go on a camping trip and I had a couple of things I wanted to do in Provence, which is in the south of France, uh, the National Park Luberon, just north of Aix-en-Provence, if you know France a little bit. Um, so that is not going to happen this week. That will be hopefully very soon that I'll still go to Provence. And instead, I am in the van with a bunch of building materials in the back that I need to return to the hardware store. But I'm also going to buy paint because as often, it happens very often, that they say it will rain all week and they said it would rain this week. But it doesn't. It's really nice and it's sunny and it's getting sunnier tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. So I figured it would be best if I do some painting in the tiny house, painting the woodwork for the uh, windows and doors. So I'm on my way now to Dijon, which is quite far because there is a special paint that I want and they don't sell that everywhere. And I'm going to get that. I'm going to stop recording because I'm going to be driving in a few seconds. So I went to Dijon today, but it always takes so much time to do everything. Like everything is so slow. And I had to go pick up our youngest son at school, so I did not have time to go to my paint store. But I did remember I have all of these testers that I bought, uh, I think last year, for various projects. And I saw that the, the color I was going to uh, get is this one. It's called Strong White. I think we want this for the interior of the tiny house. And I see I had also bought, apparently, Old White and light gray and this one light blue is a color that i would wanted to put on one of the doors 
of the bed and breakfast rooms. So I'm just going to paint these panels, uh, test them inside and see how the colors come out. Yes. Ooh, it's very white, eh? It's very white, eh? Yeah, very white. It's very white, eh? It's very white, yes. Very white. Ooh. I guess this is just it for now. Um, in general, I've tested the um, sample with the um, the paint that I put on the on the exterior um, doors and window frames, um, and just to see whether it is actually true that it looks like the the samples look a little darker than what it actually turns out in real life. It's not a very big difference, but there is a little difference. So what I will do is um, put on a second coat tomorrow on the samples that will cover up nicely all of the bugs <laughs> that are sticking to them right now. And then I think I'll just take them all inside the tiny house and see how the light works out there. Um, some furniture we already have, like the, the small desk and, and table and chairs and, and just see how it works out. That is what I'll do and I'll share all of that with you in my next vlog. Thanks for watching again and I will see you next time.